Hello, welcome to Whims and Nonsense. I am your gracious host, Zachary, and I am joined by my lovely panel of lovelies, uh, the dear Miss Abby. Hello. Um, the lovely star of stage and screen, Miss Fanning. D -D Dakota. <laughs> Wow, wow. I, I, I should, do you want me to say hello, or do I need to leave this podcast right now? <laughs> and we, we have the, the other guy, Marty. What's up? <laughs> oh, and, I blew uh, it. I had an opportunity. What, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. All Keep right, in we mind, can there's going to be no editing, so... We can continue. All right, so uh, today's discussion for our second episode around the park is going to be about uh, we're going to make up some fake video games because we're bored and we're losers. Yeah, that's true. Speak for Nobody yourself. Nobody loves us. That's not true. I love you're, you're... myself. <laughs> uh, Self-love is very important, especially sure. tough love. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I understand, Miss Abby, you've given this subject a bit of thought. I have. Uh, Who comes into these so podcasts with thought? Did you even I listen to that? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> now you know we have someone who came into it with thought. Yeah. What's wrong with you? All right, so what have you got for us? Um, since we're talking about fake video games and all that jazz, you know the good old Legend of Zelda series, never about Zelda herself. So at for one point, I just want a Zelda game that actually features Zelda as the hero doing whatever. I remember seeing an like a fake idea proposed forever ago that <clears throat> there would be a Legend of Zelda game taking place during Ocarina of Time where the seven years Link is sleeping. Zelda takes her role as Sheik and does all that setting up jazz, mumbo, whatever. And I'd be like, that'd be a cool idea for a game. A, a Legend of Zelda game, actually, with Zelda as the lead. I, I, I have a title. Super Zelda The Lost Years. There you that go. That works. Why not? Why but not? yeah, that, yeah that, that that was just and it, it could It could be, like, you know, like more uh, dramatic than it is action-y, because you have Zelda dealing with, you know, things like puberty and growing up without parents, and also having her kick them taken over by an evil pig wizard demon. Yeah. You know, normal teenage drama stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, my, my, my teenage years were, like, just as that rough. Well, you yeah, know... I know. I was there. What? What? You, you say... You say you want a Zelda game, or a Zelda game that actually features Zelda. We actually already have that. I might direct you to the Philips CDI. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> no. No. I am no. going to throw you out of this podcast. Great. Great. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Oh my god! <laughs> we, we, uh, wow, that was we... spot on. Damn, I'm Thank impressed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you aren't the first one who said that. Uh, we don't, we don't speak of the dark times. <laughs> those are the dark ages, so we don't speak of those. Except when we do. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, Zelda is, is a really serious series compared to, like, in terms of other stuff. It's kind of like up towards closer to the end of the scale, like Metroid, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the uh, exact opposite end of the scale is Mario. So right. I'd kind of like to see a role reversal in terms of gravity between the two. So like a so, super silly Zelda game? Yeah. Or like Metroid? That would be interesting. Oh my god, Metroid as a comedy? <laughs> Please? <laughs> that would be great. It's like that... Oh like... Ridley, that joker. <laughs> that wily rascal. Oh, well, I mean, he's kind of already a clown, but that's that's hey not nothing to do with anything. It's like that uh, that fake, like that super fake leak list that we saw a while ago, and one of the titles was Metroid U. Samus is fucking pissed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I remember that, and I remember that the tagline of the game should be "Motherhood's a bitch." Ew. <laughs> well, I mean, because it follows up from other M, and you know the baby. Okay. Mm. The baby. The baby. Oh, that's right. You you never really experienced other M. No, that's okay. I have not I've watched stories. Oh it's okay. god, they don't need to. They don't need to. It's okay. I I've heard the horror stories. Same. Oh, he god. ranted to me for like an hour one time. So about what other we M. need is another other M, or another M. And what we need to do is to kick you out <laughs> of the podcast and talk about some but good thinking ideas. 
This is my show. I Wait, mean, you kick, kick me out, and then you. Uh, I have to have this thing on. <laughs> Thank you for your glorious addition. I have to have that thing like pulled up instantly because I was gonna do it while we were like contemplating the another M thing, but it's fine. Let's mm. just move on. It's too it's late. Okay, you tried. You tried. I tried. I did my best. It's okay. Timing is not your strong suit. No. It's Aww. a good thing you're not a musician. Uh, I have some news for you. <laughs> oh, well then, I've got I've got some news for you. Nope. Oh, so fake games. Um, yeah, so a super serious Mario game. That'd be kind of interesting to see. Like, Mario gets a, a gritty reboot. Oh, God. Guys, what if Mario had a gun? You just described well, Shadow I mean, the Hedgehog. It's, it's, it's a gritty <laughs> exactly. reboot, so... Yeah, of course he's gonna have a gun. You guys want a fun fact about Mario? Yeah. What? In the original Super Mario Brothers, one of the ideas was that Mario was actually going to have a gun. Oh my would, god, really? You would run with the B mm -hmm. button, you would shoot with the A button, and you would jump with the up button. It was taken out pretty early. But yeah, we could have had Mario with a gun. Oh my god. <laughs> the edge. I want that Mario. Yeah. Not super like... happy jumpy a lot. The ed the edgy reboot. Everybody, every game Such series edge. needs, needs its, um, an edgy entry. Yeah, it's gotta have that gritty reboot. Everybody's got guns that have like unlimited ammo for whatever reason. And there's a lot of like you know blood and gore and dark it, lighting. Bow Bowser's they're like they don't have like Koopas anymore. They're all just like it's just like a big gang of people, and it's like yeah, we're the Koopa gang. The, the actual so, mafia. Grand Theft Auto. King Koopa or... is played by Dennis Hopper. <laughs> God. Wait. We don't Hold speak on. of that. <laughs> We can't, if we can't talk about the Zelda CDI games, we can't talk about that movie. <laughs> oh. Oh, but, uh, dude, seriously, imagine a, a video game based on that movie. God, no. God. I'm surprised no one has made a fan game of it yet. And if it exists, it, we kinda, I kind of want to see it. It probably does. It's probably Let's like see, some uh, unfinished, anything, anything unfinished mess on the somewhere Super on the Super Mario Brothers, the movie, the video game, the adapted screenplay, the novel, the hit number one song, the Tony award-winning, Broadway adaptation. The Ice Capades? Wait, that actually exists. <laughs> yes! Metroid on Ice! Oh my what? god. <laughs> what? Excuse <laughs> me? Get it? Because Metroids, they're weak to ice, so... It's Metro on ice! <laughs> god. Oh, god, we, we're, we are, like, the worst joke makers. We really are. <laughs> I, I think we try. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, like, I sometimes I don't know. try. I don't know about you guys. Sometimes well, I mean, there I'm, is effort I'm involved. I'm naturally hilarious. Let's face it, I'm the one who carries... All the comedy weight. You know, oh, sure, everything. sure, sure. And I bring the air horns. <laughs> that is your, yes. You're like the sound effect pack mule of the group. Let's do it. Apparently this app that I found also has like a thing where you can record new sounds. So we'll have to check that out. Uh, yes. Expect it in future podcasts. Oh, I'll be a soundboard. Wait. That sounds lovely. <laughs> I think. No. I don't know. It, 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 the, the other thing, terrible. No, that's great. It'll be great. Just wait for it. But anyway, back to f what video were we talking games. About? We're we're making fake video games. So Star Fox, that needs a, a well, that just needs a new game straight up. I mean, but still, out. what about like F Zero? I still F Zero listen has to be remade into a visual novel. What? Perfect. Excellent. 10 out of 10. The least speedy possible kind of video game about a racing protagonist. So a slice of, so a slice of life video game about racing protagonists. Yes. And the drama that surrounds a, but them. But it's a murder mystery. Oh my god. It was you, you know, who you, killed Captain Falcon. No, because they had to find the Captain Falcon. That's the entire point, because it's worth a lot of money, and it's tied to this old dude who just died. You guys have no idea what I'm referencing to you. I mean... I feel like I should. The the Maltese Falcon? Oh. oh. God damn it. God. 
but no. Everything's if, a reference with me. While we're talking about F Zero, I've for the longest time I've been wanting to see just like a cap a beat 'em up, like with Captain Falcon, where he just that, like goes Super around. Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Outside of Super Smash Bros, like a 3D, like think, like Bayonetta. You've played a little bit of that. Think mm-hmm. like that, but with Captain Falcon. I could kind of see it. That could kind of work. You know, Captain well, Falcon. Why, you know, why not? He's, he's a I'd bounty buy hunter. It. Why not? He can go, this could all be about him hunting bounties and getting cash. I mean, he doesn't need to be yeah. racing all the time. Yeah. Th- this racing is just his cover to get close to his bounties. Yeah, I was going to say, in between I, I, racing... I'd like to think that the only reason he got notoriety as a racer is because he had to get into a race to get close to one of his bounties. I think so. And then he just, he was just like, he happened to have won, and he's just like, yeah, I, I'm here for the that guy. And he goes on, but he's like the greatest racer in the entire history of the universe. That's a, actually, I'm really good at, good at this. Uh, well, might as well make a career of it. <laughs> then again, I don't even know why we're talking about a new F-Zero game. Why do we need one? We got one just a few months ago. Mario Kart 8 has been the best F-Zero game oh I've played God. in years. <laughs> That's true. That, that is true. Yeah. Speaking of Mario Kart... What if we take the racing out of Mario Kart? You mean make Nintendo Kart? Which the Mario Kart 8 DLC is already kind of doing? Yeah. Super, Super Smash Kart 2008. Super, what? <laughs> you're a little... You're like seven years late on that one, Maestro. <laughs> Look, Nintendo, they Look. delays all the time, okay? Yeah, Nintendo yeah. It was originally just supposed behind. to come out in 2008. Nintendo is just like seven years behind everyone anyway. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Shots, shots fired at you, Nintendo. And yet we're still buying all of their games anyway. <laughs> it's true. Who's the real suckers? Nintendo us. or us? Us. They make good games. But they're sure. also... Like, no. I'm not going to go into that. That's for another That's for another time. <laughs> I still kind of want a Pokemon Snap, too. Even that it's the biggest pipe dream I'll, I'll ever have, but... Before now, say E3 in a week. <laughs> I would probably die of a heart attack. Yeah. Look, if we're just going to talk about bucket e- wish E3 things, bucket list E3 things, mother compilation for 3DS... There's one, two, and three. On oh, the, on the and I thought I had a pipe dream. Like I said, <laughs> pipe dreams. Not real. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think It'll, it'll never happen. happen. We don't need for it to happen because yes, we have we do. excellent fan translations, which would probably be which are probably just as good, if not better, than what Nintendo themselves could do. Wrecked. Shots fired. I mean, I say this, and I actually love Nintendo of America's localization, but... Yeah, they do a good job. Well, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> really feel about what? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, alright, moving on! Pac-Man! So are we just gonna gritty reboot Pac-Man too? Like, what? Yeah, let's just gritty reboot every single major franchise since the 80s. Okay. Yeah. So, Pac-Man, he's gotta have a gun. Uh... He's got a he he he's still a ghost hunter, sure. Uh, he's human, because you know Kay. that's what you do in gritty reboots. Oh my yeah. god! You just made me think of like like the worst ever gritty reboot I've ever seen of something is Bomberman Act Zero. <laughs> I'm not even a fan of Bomberman because I haven't really played much of the game, so it's respect to the franchise. And that game still pained me. It's just terrible. looking at it, just acknowledging oh, its existence. It's terrible, and it shouldn't have been made. What the fuck? We can say that about a lot of games. I still look, I, I, I still look back on Sonic 06 and Shadow and Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm like, hmm. I still wonder why I own Shadow the Hedgehog. Morbid curiosity. Yeah. No. I, we need a sequel to that game. No, Let's we be don't. honest here. We need a sequel to Sonic Boom. Wait, that's already in development. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a sequel to the. They 3DS didn't finish one, the first though. one. That it's a sequel to the 3DS one though, the one that wasn't terrible. But it was, was okay, still terrible. But it wasn't great. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yeah. It's not Rise of Lyric terrible. It's, it's not, not but it's still terrible. Still terrible. Sonic 3D Blast terrible. 
You, you know what would what terrible. would be really great? A 2D Sonic game? Because, I mean, th they've never tried it before. So what if they take the Sonic, take him out of the 3D, put him into the 2D, top down, and he just runs forward up your screen the entire time? That could work, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Maybe. Like, absolutely. 10 out of 10. Game of the year. Everyone <laughs> love it. Speaking of which, I want a sequel to Shovel Knight. Right? Because that was a game of the year type thing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, didn't that come out, like, last, basically, like, last indie year. game of the year last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. More or less, because, like, everybody was talking about it. That game was fantastic. Like, I didn't get to play it until it later this like. It's alright, it's just, I, I, it. I don't understand what the big deal is. We're it's gonna fantastic. Have some it's We're gonna have some great. problems. <laughs> Look, are we gonna have some problems? Are we it gonna... takes a lot to impress, impress me with a platformer, alright? <laughs> it's true. Mm. I mean, I, I, I want a cave story too, but that's never gonna happen. Well, well Shovel Knight 2 could happen, just not anytime soon. They're still busy with all of the free DLC updates that are coming out. Plague of Shadows is gonna come out sometime in 2015. Oh, yeah. And that's a year after the original game came out and all the ports of the other systems. And they still have to do the, uh, the two other campaigns with, uh, Plague Knight and King Knight, I think? And then they have to do the multiplayer mode and the, the gender flip mode where all the sprites are different. And that's probably gonna let Shovel Knight, the original game, last until, like, 2016, maybe 2017, if we want to be really, really generous, so I can't see yeah. a Shovel Knight sequel coming out till at least 2019, unless they got more, unless they grow as a developer and they get more people. But even then, I hear Way Forward, uh, not Way Forward, they used to, their X-Way Forward does. Yacht mm -hmm. Club wants to do uh, their, some other things, too, so I'm, I'm yeah, just excited to see what they do. Yeah, Shovel Knight this entire time has always kind of struck me as a one-off. Like, it was just it was just something that they wanted to make because it was supposed to be, like, a big throwback to the old old school. Right. Because that's all indie game developers know how to do. Oh, wrecked. Shots fired. <laughs> Can this episode basic, just be like... called Shots Fired? <laughs> all right, yeah, let's just let's just change the subject to just taking cheap pot shots at, like, anybody. Aww. With copious <laughs> air horn. Oh, my God. <laughs> but no, because, like, yeah, I mean, because... I mean, look around at most indie devs. I mean, yeah, there are the few that stand out and make really, you know, unique and exceptional titles, like the guy who did Five Nights at Freddy mm -hmm. and the sequels. That came yeah. out, like, like monthly. Like, like, yeah, that... I mean, he's really milking it. I don't think he's got another game in him, honestly. He does. Uh. That's the thing. <laughs> There's another one coming out. No, I mean, I don't think he has, like, another ti different game. Oh. Not a, not a, a different sequel. title. A sequel is easy. You already have everything. You just do it again. Yeah. It's true. At this point, he doesn't need to make any more games. He just releases Five Nights 4. He'll have tons of money from the sales of all the games. He could retire, and no one he would could. bat an eye, because he already left don't, his mark. I don't think so, because, I mean, it's still an indie game. It's not like he's selling it for, like, a full retail price, like 60 bucks a pop. No, That's but he's still selling. He's still, a lot of people, he is still selling he's, hell of copies yeah. of that game, though. Yeah, but it's not nearly retirement money. Good living for a couple of years, maybe if he if he plays his cards right. But I mean, because he still has to pay out people like Steam and all of his distributors because they all take a cut. That's true. So it's I'm not I'm not saying he's not doing well. I just don't think he's got another game in him. I could be wrong. Uh, we 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 the shall see. Has could at least buy him enough time to figure out a different sort of game, but mm, I don't it's know. A pretty I spot. haven't played the yeah. Five Nights games. I'm not really like invested in uh, the developer, so mm. I've played the first two and they're all right, but it it the sequel struck struck me as more of the same. Yeah, lore and the overall story mm -hmm. and ooh spooky, but at the same time, I just kind of like. It's the same. It's literally the same game all three times. Oh yes. It's sending. Is it sending shivers down your spine, though? No, oh. I've, I've never been afraid of the spooky, scary skeletons. Spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that on your soundboard. You see, this is where if we Ooh. had more editing, mm. he would edit in spooky, scary skeletons the song, but we don't. Sorry, guys. Womps. Oh, whoa, 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 friend. Are, are you criticizing my ability to run this show? I thought this was the Shots Fired episode, wasn't it? 
No, uh, I th it, it is. Oh, and, it, uh, I guess. Let, let me let me show you something. No, please. Please at least do this. How's that? Oh my God! <laughs> what did you do? Oh, oh! I see how it is. I see how it is. <laughs> For those who are confused, he just kicked him out of the call. <laughs> Oh, oh, I was gonna say, oh, I, beautiful, I, I, beautiful. Except that deserves it. Like matters since the audio is recording. Wait, we all get along because we're one big happy family. I would, I, I, I would like another Pokemon uh, Stadium game, please. Mm. It's like a fifteen dollar, fifteen twenty dollar download. I could, I could reason it. It could make sense if they do it right. I know everyone wants the mini games, but I also want a lot of the cool battle features too. Like, well, yeah, Jupiter I like a lot of the battle features, stuff. but like, let's be honest. Well, I mean, I just want a console Pokemon game. game. I, I don't understand. They're games. never going to make a console Pokemon game. That's never going to happen. Because the Pokemon's big appeal is the fact that it's mobile, so you can battle Pokemon literally anytime you want. Yeah. You you tie it to a console, and then it it takes the edge off. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But that said, Pokemon Stadium could work well if they do it on the Wii U, and they because pretty much all they need to do they just need to translate their their current battle setups into 3D, full 3D, realized 3D, give you every single Pokemon, and just say, here thirty bucks. Yeah, and then just and then just make some different stadium like stadium situations they did, and add some mini games. And like I guess I get from a lot of people. You first. You first. No, go ahead. I don't know what All I was right. gonna say. Okay. Here's the feeling. No I can... me. Oh. 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 <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just let. The... Oh my God, Dakota, continue. Thank you, Abby. Anyway. Fight. The fight. Feeling... Fight. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Editing. Wait. Wait. We don't have that. <laughs> That's the magic <laughs> of the podcast. Anyway, as you were saying. What were we talking about? <laughs> Pokemon Stadium and the chances for a future game. The feeling I get is that most people want another Pokemon Stadium just because of the mini games. So if that's the but case, I like the mini games. Make a mini game compilation. You already have the Poke Park games. Just instead of making Poke Park, just make a just make a make a mini game compilation. You could have like fifty mini games or even 60, 70 mini games for a thirty nine ninety nine or twenty nine ninety nine price tag. Look, people will buy anything with the with the name Pokemon in it. That's, That's true. That's true. But my so more Except for me. My is yeah. a hater. But I was gonna say, like more so I want to I like the combination of the battles and the mini games for for stadium. That is certainly true. That is certainly like I can, true. Like, I, like, if I'm playing with friends, we can, we can do some of the event battles or choose some of the really, their, um, rental Pokemon or whatever. And Look, then I, I, I mini just want to be able to build an all-electro team and just see how it goes. That's I mean, you can I do want. that. Yeah. That's Rip. all I want. I mean, let's be honest. The rental Pokemon, no matter what, won't be as good as the Pokemon you get in your games because they'll deliberately oh. limit them. But that's kind of the point. Yeah, that's the point. The rentals are supposed to be ter terrible. I seem, yeah, I seem to remember the move sets on the ones in Stadium they're being like, just they're, horrendous. Like, they're terrible, but they're supposed to be that bad. And they're trying to make them balance by making the weaker Pokemon have the better moves, but the evolution and the stronger have Pokemon the having moves. the weaker moves. And. It's annoying, but come on, it's 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 an excuse for you to buy a Game Boy game and to import your own Pokemon. And mm -hmm. no, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Speaking with that. of Pokemon, the gritty reboot. Oh boy. Oh God. <laughs> it, what? It, I mean, let's face it. This is just this is just glorified like you know animal fights, right? Well, that's basically like that like Flash game that Peta made. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. No, please. That's. No. Why? Why? <laughs> I almost Why? forgot that existed. Thank you. Like yes, but see, that's the thing. You make it like this super seedy, dark underground type of sport, and, and, and the entire idea is you're trying to be the best of the poker fighters or whatever, and <laughs> and also you're trying not to you know get caught. So it, it basically that and drugs, and you got a hit. Fat and drugs. 
Do they come with the? <laughs> do they come? Do they come with a digital download, or do you have to like get the physical copy for that? Uh, you have to get the physical copy for the drugs. <laughs> is it like a pre-order bonus or day one DLC? Or... <laughs> day one DLC. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think it could work. Wait, Makes wait, sense. guys, we're we're missing the most important series that needs a gritty re that, that needs a gritty installment. Kirby. Oh God. I mean, Kirby's I'm already sure. got like gritty entries. I mean, have you played the like the Nightmare and Dreamland series? Eh, <laughs> is that gritty eh, or dark? Or... Kirby's Mark's a gun. soul, Mark's soul. When you beat that, th that Not monstrosity, and it produces a blood curdling shriek. Kirby sixty four, the fight with O two. Yes, yes. Prize blood I mean, is scary, shooting, and I don't like it. Shooting with a crystal gun. That's, that's Kirby gun. Is, pro is possibly Nintendo's darkest series. It's just got sugar coating on top of it. That's true. Yeah, that's actually kind of true. I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. Damn. But it needs to be more grittier. Damn, Kirby, you scary. More... Kirby's fucking pissed. Just get Kirby a gun. Kirby, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds like a bizarre swerve. Like, Kirby, you! <laughs> Rude. A little bit. How dare you say I'm that trying to me. think of other n um, Nintendo franchises that can use a gritty reboot. Where's our gritty Fire Emblem reboot? Well, technically, Ooh. there is a really dark Fire Emblem Freddy game. That was back on the SNES. I don't more. know. I but we're already getting the pointless fan service from the rated M for mature yeah. games. You might as well go the whole pile and make the game super dark and uh, uber realistic to manage it. <laughs> yeah, so that means, you know, everybody dies every mission. No resets? No resets. Oh, God. Um, Basically, I'm... Game of Thrones, the video game. Well, the That's actually a thing. Well, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say, the fourth yeah, Fire Emblem was sort of like that, because it's, like, it's arguably, like, the most, like, Grim, dark one in the series. Mm -hmm. A lot of shit happens in that one, but we can save that for another time. No, I got it. Where's my what? dark and gritty duck hunt reboot? You have the gun. <laughs> oh god! Like, Is that where you get to shoot the dog? Or? <laughs> no, you're you're, you're just a lone hunter and a, a, a duck zombie uprising. Thank you. I was, I was going to say post-apocalyptic. We gotta have some the the, the ducks the mutated the into these grotesque, hulking duck monsters, and you and your trusty dog have to survive in this environment. And the dog is like it's little, Last of Us, but with ducks. Oh, come it'll, on! It'll be the oh. So what's the point? We won't even be able to do much shooting. It'll be the best movie ever, at least. <laughs> oh. Uh, 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 I think it would sell. Disclaimer, Why not? Dakota does not hate Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog is a good company. I just have not played The Last of Us and don't really care to. We Fit needs a greedy reboot. Does it, though? Oh, my God. How would that even work? You give the We Fit trainer a gun. <laughs> she's just threatening to shoot you the entire time. Do your job. You're trying to get fit. I will make Let's... you fit into a You're off bag. center, goddammit! <laughs> Let's stretch those legs. Or I'll cut them off. <laughs> She's just like in a dungeon room, just like with the weird fitness euphemisms. She's a dominatrix, basically. Oh, oh God. Okay. I, I, I knew we were going dark and gritty, but I didn't know we were going in that direction. Let's let's pull it back a little bit. Pull how about back. a? I know this is pretty recent, but how about a Splatoon gritty reboot? Or it's just a shooter. <laughs> the gun shoot blood. I mean, have you, where you, I mean, where you so swim in the blood of your like enemies? I mean, it's... You swim in the blood of your enemies instead of your ink. <laughs> well, like, the ink could probably be the body fluids of the squid, so that's already happening. You know there. what? And I has don't everyone need your already sass? beaten Splatoon story mode? Yes. No. no. The sunken... Oh, okay, then I can't say anything. Donkey Kong needs a gritty reboot. Yes. Uh, well, okay. Because he's an ape, right? He's a gorilla. Yep. So just have him running around being a fucking gorilla and just, like, tearing people in half. <laughs> so basically King Kong, but with Donkey Kong. Yes. We can't it do needs that to come yet. full circle. But we can't do that or else Can. Universal will sue us. Oh, no. Get sued by Kansas. Well, you know, we have to make some sacrifices. Wait, where's my dark and edgy Mega Man reboot? I, mean, I was about to it say that. I actually mean that the franchise would get a game. 
I That's mean, pretty dark and gritty. Oh, what was, we, we said the same thing Speaking about F-Zero. Speaking of which, they are releasing that, like, re, like, re-release, I guess, of, like, the first however many they made. And Carol the only... had more games anniversary collection. Yeah, and it's, like, the only thing I thought as soon as I saw that was, like, they're only doing this because of Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty Number no. 9 needs a great reboot. My, uh. Mighty Number no. 9 needs to be booted in the first place before we talk <laughs> about that. And then get a gritty reboot. First they said I wasn't good enough. I'll show them. I'll show them all. Okay. What are they getting the WarioWare gritty reboot? You know, <laughs> make those five second micro games really mean something, you know? Yeah. Shoot him. <laughs> Kill the hostages! <laughs> Kill the hostages! <laughs> Hide the there body. There we go. There we go. Perfect. I mean, I mean he's he's got the whole biker persona, so he could just be like the head of a gang and just like just doing horrible, horrible right. shit around this Dr- wherever. You no know, drug deals and drive bys, running people over. Jesus. Anything to make that. So wait, are we simply are we describing GTA with Wario in it? We're describing GTA. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yes, We're describing we GTA with every single thing that we've talked about for the last half hour. <laughs> oh. So basically what you're saying is we need GTA but for Nintendo. Oh, Wait, what we need we just... is a super massive crossover of every single Nintendo franchise to have ever existed. Give them a gritty reboot in the same game, in the same universe, and call it Grand Nintendo Theft Auto there will be Mobile. Brawl? Are you describing there will be Brawl? Because that's about as dark and gritty that works. of a reboot as I can think of. <laughs> oh, that works. There were, no, there was an online web series called There Will Be Brawl. There was like a live action interpretation of the Nintendo universe that was very dark and cynical. And oh, I haven't seen, seen it, but apparently people have said it's good. Yeah, I've heard some good things about it. Well, it's uh, dark. Like, really, really dark. Well, let's face it. A light-hearted Nintendo anything that's not a video game is not gonna do well. That has to be much darker. Because that's where story happens. Interesting. Well, yeah. it doesn't have to be darker. It just has to, you know, you can take it any way you want. Like, I don't think, uh, like, the I mean, Mario and Luigi games, for example, are really that dark. I mean, they're darker than the Mario series, because the Mario series don't really have a plot, so you can't really go much right. deeper than... You can't really be much well, lighter I mean, than nothing, but... Pretty much all the it's RPGs... Still mostly com- are... It's still mostly, like, comedy. There's some drama, but it's hmm, mostly lighthearted. It's mostly just silly, lighthearted stuff. You well, yeah, it's like still bad. Mario. I mean, mm-hmm. you could, you could probably, if you could tell a story like the RPGs do, with that sort of humor and tone, and maybe occasionally dip into the darker stuff, you could probably do just fine if you wanted like a series or a movie, even. Yeah. Hey, remember that Legend of Zelda show that was never gonna happen? Oh, you mean the live action thing? Yeah. The old oh, Netflix yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I still wonder yeah. how they would pull that off. You know. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They yeah. Wouldn't know. That's the, that's the answer. They wouldn't do it. I would watch at least the first episode just to see how it how it how they I, did it. I, I would want to see the cast before I before I watched it or not. That's just a question. Who do you get to play the cast? Because first of all, Link should not talk. Yeah. So you you just need to get a guy who's pretty fit and has a pretty face. Yeah, a pretty blonde guy. I mean, it depends on the Link, though. Like, if we're just going generic-ass Link, then yeah. But I think some of the later Links have been given more snippets of a personality. So in yeah. those situations, it wouldn't be as bad. It's like if you're just going with a blank slate Link. Like, you could probably give Skyward Sword Link a voice, for example. Like, an actual yeah. voice actor and character. And that would be fine. Or you could give it to Wind Waker Link. But you mm-hmm. can't, like, do it with, like, a Link to the Past Link. Or, mm-hmm. uh... Ocarina of Time, like. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing. Uh, we wouldn't, wouldn't know what Zelda game they would even make the series after because there was so many to choose from. See, it, if they were to do something like that, it would have to be more so about just general Zelda tropes rather than basing it off of any one game. Yeah. Because each of those games are drastically different in significant ways from one another to render them actually different from their predecessors. Right. That's kind of the point. Oh, so, right. And it, 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 it'd have to be its own self-contained uh, entity that 
does away with any of the typical expectations you would for a video game and substitute them for more, like, writing and plot. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think that could work. The only problem I would have with it is that, well, if you think about it, in certain ways Zelda fits the standard Tolkien-esque fantasy, but in a lot of ways and a lot of its visual motifs, particularly in a lot of the later games, it doesn't. It mixes a lot of different things of a lot of different cultures. I have a feeling that if they someone made like a Zelda series like that, they would probably just make it standard Tolkien fantasy, which I think would kind of be doing the franchise a disservice. It it yeah. had to be some sort of hybrid between the two, or just full on, you know, the more unique stuff that came later. Right. But you, you but speaking of, of video games that should be translated into shows, Metroid, that would be a great show. That would yeah. be. But then we're really getting off topic. But then we're really getting off topic here. Before we go back to being on topic, I want to say, like, how would that work? A big part of Metroid is exploration and isolation, meaning that for the most part, I, unless you're I making mean, a very different story, if you're going to capture the tone and the feel of the video games, it would have it really to be work. largely about. It, 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 most of it's basically going to be nothing but monologue and soliloquy with occasional interactions with other people, but it's. It's mostly going to be like a cerebral experience. So it's just like, you know, Sam is just going around. Like, her mission is, I, I don't know, ba just catch Ridley, because, you know, she is a bounty hunter after all. Right. Or even so, make it about her first bounty. Yeah. It could possibly, it could work. And mm -hmm. then we can tie that back into the main subject of this freaking podcast and have that be the gritty reboot for Metroid. Another M. Have it be her first bounty. Make it be another M. No. Uh, we, we, we already made that joke. We're bringing it back full circle. No, okay? it was a bad no. joke. Well, you know what? No. Here's what I say to that. Yeah, and here's what I say to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fucking a rats. Post. Right. Uh oh. Anyway, back to the topic. I was but fully no, content to just leave. <laughs> oh. It would have made for a much entertaining podcast. Oh. Oh. Wow. Wait, you got Ouch. me there. So you got me there. I'll give that one to you. I will give you that one. But no, anyway. I, I, would, I would like to see a video, a, a, a Metroid video game that is not about Metroid and Mother Brain and the Space Pirates and all that, but more so just about her and her first mission as a bounty hunter. I would like that. Yeah, what cool. would you call it? Like, Metroid First Hunt? Metroid Zero? Wait. Yep. Man, yeah. this is going to be hard to name. Localization team, get on it. <laughs> we... we, we... We should have been writing, writing down all these ideas, and we should have just mailed them to Nintendo at the end of the, at the, end of the podcast. <laughs> Look, no, Nintendo, Nintendo listen Nintendo to me. We, we call it The Metroid. Because, you know, it's a, it's a gritty reboot. That's what everybody does. It's The X is what you're yeah. rebooting. Oh, yeah. I mean, unless you're Sega, then you just do the title of your first game again. So the, the so like the gritty reboot of Super Mario is the Super Mario. <laughs> it it's not that his name is Mario. That's just the title of the role he's inherited. The like it's Super been passed Mario. down from generation to generation. So is this really a gritty and he's got reboot? guns. Is this really a gritty reboot or is this um one hundred years later sort of thing when Mario has become a mythical legend? Both. It's like it's like a. It's, it's a gritty reimagining. It's a gritty reboot crossover go. of Mario and the Legend of Zelda. Where it's Mario, but with like the Legend of Zelda timeline. Oh my God! Oh, no. Where Mario and Bowser are reborn every hundred years. So we call it the Legend of Mario, the Legend yeah. of the Super Mario. The there we go. Peach. The Legend of Peach, a Mario to the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that it could be like you know, that that's more of sounding like it's and it's got some weird Doctor Who elements in it as well. <laughs> Really want to go there? No, we don't. Really want to go there? Let's not. Really, I don't think we're ready for this. Uh, it's not. too late. I already said it, so they're just gonna come flooding in. Oh God. What's this? Excuse me. Yeah. What other games could use? Since you know, what the topic has evolved to. What else could use a you know a gritty dark reboot? Crash mm -hmm. Bandicoot. 
I mean, look at what Naughty Dog's making, dark, gritty, kind of okay-ish games that are super cinematic and stuff. Have them buy back the Crash Bandicoot franchise, ship on all the memorable fun and platforming that we have, and make it a cinematic story where Crash and Coco must stop Dr. Cortex from taking over the world with his diabolical plans. With guns. All right. So, so basically, the only thing that changes is you make Cortex an actual credible villain. Wrecked. Well, I'm also pretty much making it Uncharted, but... <laughs> well, that... Yeah, of course, because you gotta give him the freaking ascot bandana thing, whatever. All right. Because that's, like, all their character designs. I mean, well, while we're at it, let's give Spyro the Dragon a gritty reboot. Didn't it? They already try that? Did they? That was... His, not, that was... That was it, well, I don't think it was gritty enough. It was sort of darkish, but it's more just sort of high fantasy-ish rather than the cartoony stuff from before. It's not yeah. gritty enough. So Look, it, it, need, it needs to be Spyro meets Skyrim. That's that's the level oh of gritty God. it needs. No, no, no. So that means you have to kill Spyro. Look, look, guys, guys, guys. Let, let's be real here. The fact that Spyro is now just a corporate shill for the Skylanders is already dark enough. I don't need any more Aww. darkness of that. Yeah, that's like, gritty in my life. Itself. That is that's that that is depressing enough. The grittiest reboot of all. We're never gonna get. <laughs> yeah, the, the sad realization that we're probably never gonna get another Spyro game again, since Skylander Spyro was technically a Skylanders character and part of the Skyland and Spyro is is now really the Skylanders franchise and that franchise right. is never gonna f and die because it's so dang successful. Right. Huh. Uh, I can't even make make a band because we. Manager Kazooie dark, um, joke because nuts and bolts still haunts me. Right. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit! We'll always love you. I can't believe you did this to me. God damn it! How could you do this to me? You you, you actually did the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, okay. Like, okay. Thank, thank thank you for now greatly overshadowing this tiny little podcast by referencing John Tron. God <laughs> damn it! You're welcome. <laughs> John Sharp, please notice me! <laughs> notice me, senpai. I'm, I'm sorry, it's gonna take a lot more than that. Aww. But it's okay, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running someday. out of games. Yeah, we Well, for, if we're going with legitimate gritty reboots, yeah. I really don't... Oh, wait, no. Ape Escape. You guys ever play Ape Escape? Oh my god. Nope. <laughs> It was this. Ape Escape, the, the was, Dark Years. It, it was one of Sony's earliest, uh, fra one of its earlier franchises, I should say. It was made pretty much to just take advantage of the DualShock controller, and you know it had a couple PS2 sequels, a couple mini game, mini game things, and then nothing. It didn't get a proper PS3 installment. No news of a PS4 game. So what do you do? You got to bring back for Ape Escape Four. You just the, the big bad Spectre has had enough. This time, he's out for blood, so he gets the people people helmets that control the monkeys, and he just jacks them up, and now the monkeys are feral. So now, you gotta go with your with your net, and catch the monkeys before they tear everyone to shreds. There. Perfect. S send me a check, Sony. 10 out of 10 I IGN. <laughs> fucking game of the year. And that could segue into the intro to the original Donkey Kong oh. arcade game. Oh. Yes. Oh. So this is how it started. It's, yes. It, Ape Escape is just a prequel to Super Mario Brothers. Of course. The, the Super uh, Mario it, Brothers. It all connects. Oh. Video games are interconnected with each other. This is sounding like a really bad episode of Game Theory. Let's stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're have talking you, have about you, Have you, you know. ever seen anything else we've done? <laughs> yeah. Mm, I mean, yeah, we I literally mean, just. I don't know. <laughs> it could be worse, but that's just a theory. A game theory. No. Thanks for no. watching. Please stop me now. <laughs> Pikmin. Oh, I mean, it's already post-apocalyptic. Post what else do you want? Yeah, calm it down. You you show what happened before the events of Pikmin. Okay. What did the Pikmin so, uprise and take and destroy the human dominance? No, the here's the thing. It focuses. It, it, it's it's kind of an actiony adventure type game where. There's this big, ginormous, evil corporation that's planning to take over the world with, you know, like these mutant creature bug things. And you, you're you just this lowly scientist who's got to try and fight and stop them. And so you go around doing all that and you end up making 
these tiny little flower things to do your bidding for you. It, th one thing leads to another, everyone dies, and then Olimar shows up. Yeah, okay. that one's a little flat. Mm. Okay. Come on, guys, everyone knows that the best gritty reboot is Tony Hawk. When are we getting a oh new my God. <laughs> Tony Hawk game? So just give everybody a gun, and the last one standing wins. No, you have to do... Tr <laughs> the only way to get a kill on someone is that you have to do an ollie, like a 360 spin, triple axle flip in the air. There are guns your in gun. the skateboards! Well, aiming your... Yeah, you have to aim your gun accurately <laughs> in order to shoot. You have to do a perfect... You have to do tricks in order to get your to get your gun ammo. And then you have to be in the air to shoot your gun. Yeah. Oh I hope you're watching you gotta Tony curve Hawk. This better the be on bullet. Pro Skater 5. The wheels have guns. Okay, admittedly, admittedly, a combat <laughs> game ba combined with a, uh, with a, with a, like a trick point sort of game, like, uh, Tony Hawk, like, actually ooh. would be kinda interesting. Not that I SSX. Think about it. SSX with guns. Like, maybe, yes. maybe I'm just thinking a little bit of Jet Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio, but I've actually never played it, so I wouldn't know. Maybe I just need to play those games. Or a I don't know. The, the Tony Hawk Ready reboot sounds way better. That sounds like fucking amazing. I'd make that game if I had the money. Yeah, like this actually sounds like <laughs> legitimately fun. You could probably mod it somehow. I know. I, I was just saying, we can just go to Kickstarter. Dude, guys, Tony Hawk with guns. <laughs> That's the entire that's the entire Kickstarter campaign. It gets a trillion yeah. dollars in the first two hours. We don't even need to make the game anymore. We just we make it and it's there, it's done. And then we just go move to the to the tropical island somewhere, I don't know. Okay. And then people find us and kill us because we stole their money. Except we have enough money to hire security. Technically No, because okay. once it's funded, they already spent their money. We According to the uh, Kickstarter bylaws, if I'm understanding them correctly, you don't... They're not obligated to make sure you deliver. Yeah. So you're you are basically at the whim of whatever marketplace you're shilling your product in the first place. So either the U.S. market, Canada, England, wherever. Yeah. Well, the more you know. And if you have a trillion dollars, so you could buy the entire American judicial system, so... Nah, I'd rather have the money to myself, you know, just 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 stay safe for life, buy a couple houses, a car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but see, once you have that much money, it just constantly accumulates even more wealth. It just snowballs and takes care of itself. No, I just yeah. I just I just put some of it in the bank. I give like, well, I don't really need a trillion dollars, so I'll donate about half of that to charities. I'm actually, right. probably more. Like, you're you're good deed for the life. I'm actually, <laughs> probably more like uh. 90% of it, I mean, I, I can live off of, what is it, whether that be $100,000? I mean, $100 million? Or billion? No, that. no, 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 that's more than that, honestly. That's probably like, one that would be like about, actually, if I just paid 99%, I'd still have a billion if, if, dollars to my name. That's, if, that's a pretty simple if, existence. If we're still on the subject of making fake, fake video games, there needs to be a simulation game about starting and running a successful Kickstarter campaign. That would be great. Sort of like video game dev tycoon or whatever it was called. Yes. Yeah, but for Kickstarter. That would be oh. that would be a very very meta game, and that would be great. Yeah, that's why I that's why the I think it's funded on Indiegogo. Correct. <laughs> In incredible, just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Kickstarter, the game, the movie, the the, the theme park. Experience. The Kickstarter experience. Brought yes, to you by Indiegogo. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh. I would I would legitimately fund that. I That would actually be a really yeah. interesting game series. I wouldn't I wouldn't even care if that actually, you know, saw a lot of day or if I ever got a chance to play it. Just, just the idea is actually really interesting enough. It just needs to happen. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it. I think it'd be pretty fun. Be the first in a series of meta games where it's just games about games. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Maybe My this God. is the fake idea we're all accumulating towards. We had to dig yes. through so many gritty reboots and half baked ideas. I got it! What? I got it! I what? got it! 
Nintendo, the video game, a day in the life of Shigeru Miyamoto. Game of the year. Ten out of Automatically. Ten. Ten out of ten. Absolutely. Ten out of ten. 100, 100. Best, best game. <laughs> Why we gotta do oh, that? Everyone would, would it's, buy that it's, game. it's it's ba it's basically the uh, the video game version of a biopic about Shigeru Miyamoto. <laughs> but people will still buy it because it's about Miyamoto. Which you you know what? I'm kind of curious to see if whether or not they're going to make a movie about that man somewhere down the line. They will. They should. They need to. He's basically the father of the video game industry as we know it today, so... Uh, yeah. I'd go see it if I were still alive. <laughs> what? I mean, this movie, I don't know, might be made in like 2100, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be alive overall. Mm, over no. Not with that attitude. No, yeah, it, it'd probably be made within the next 15 years. It would be yeah. interesting. Mark, mark my words. Hmm. Alright, I, I will mark your words, and if you are wrong, I will find you. We'll, start, uh, we'll make a work. Kickstarter about it on Kickstarter the game, and if that works, <laughs> we'll put it on actual <laughs> Kickstarter. There we go. Uh, oh, there we go. Boys. Thinking ahead. The video That's game it. is just a test in order to see if we can make documentaries about video game people. Yeah. It just, it just gets, see, you just get more and more meta. That's, that's incredible. What have God, we done? The amount... We're, we're gen we are geniuses. Why aren't, why aren't we rich yet? Basically, we need to make a giant <laughs> simulation game that is capable of running even smaller simulations within it. See, the real reason we're not rich is that we is that we haven't done it yet. We need to just we, do we'll, it. We'll call it Simception. There we go. Because well, I'm a fucking hack. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, SimCity needs a green reboot. You know what else needs a green reboot? Wait, Pong. Wait, wait guys. SimCity Pong. already had a green reboot. It was so scary. You had to be online all the time just to play it. No, but see, like, instead of instead of it being the normal thing, the green reboot is, like, you're just one guy landing on, like, Plymouth Rock as, like, GO! <laughs> ah, shit! <laughs> nah, nah, no. if, if we're talking to a legitimate... Dark and gritty SimCity. You'd probably just hit, become the, the mayor Dawn of Man of like a no of, of like a crime ridden town that's full of like corruption and deception. Wait, and you'd have wait. To do it. Sim City, you're the mayor of of uh, Raccoon City. Speaking oh, of mayor, speaking of mayor and gritty reboots, where's our dark Animal Crossing no, game? Just, just, no. Oh God! Welcome to oh, camp. God. They're gonna fan service up Isabel to be the to be the hot fan service love interest. And okay, you you can stop right there. Yeah, forget, we'll forget I said anything. See, that's what I thought. This slide Animal Crossing Gritty reboot is a bad idea. Mayor Maestro, welcome to the city. The crime rate's on the rise, and drug problems are everywhere. Here's your cabinet. They're all dead. Have fun. <laughs> it could work. It's just then it's just game over. Just straight uh -huh. up. <laughs> So you basically spend sixty dollars on a cutscene. Pretty yeah. much, because it still get the same like basic win, quote unquote, parameters of the regular Animal Crossing games. So you come in and you've already fucked up. Oh. So then yeah, the game is already over. Paying and sixty dollars for a cutscene, I don't see anything Drugs different. Drugs don't pay. <laughs> well, like a five-minute cutscene, not like a three to five-hour-long movie. I don't see anything different. <laughs> well, yeah. It'd feel like a lifetime. That was the longest five minutes of my life. Ew. I'll play again. And then just play it again. And again and again and again. And, again. and, again. and, and then you show it to your friends and like, oh shit, I gotta buy this game. And they buy it and they watch it again and again. And it's revealed that it's just Shigeru Miyamoto's way to brainwash America so that he can, so they can send Shig the Nintendo Wii U to everyone's house and just destroy the PS4. Which is what happens in the plot of A Day in the Life of Shigeru Miyamoto! <laughs> so, this is, so this is... It all comes together. It. So this is like meta product placement for yeah. The Day in the Life of Shigeru Miyamoto. So, th this is just all one super convoluted video game. You're basically playing SimCity, where you're basically simulating the life of a guy trying to make a video game 
about the Kickstarter process in which inside the Kickstarter process you try to kickstart a game that's about the Nintendo industry, which is about Shigeru Miyamoto making a video game that is a super dark reboot of Animal Crossing that simulates drug use. Yes. It's simulacrum to the extreme. I can't handle this right now. <laughs> but it would be so much fun. And we'll just call it video games, the video game. There we go. See, Vigilant we got games. this. We the so Vigilant got this. I, I think that might exist already. The title might already actually exist. Well, we deserve the title more than they well, do. Time okay. to look it up. Oh, and I'm already making the Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, it would probably sell. Let's face would it. it, though? Video I game, think it the would. game on Newgrounds.com. Oh my god. And, and the subtitle would be The Gritty Reboot. The, the grittiest of reboots. So, such great. The reboots much of grittiest. Reboot the entire video game industry. <laughs> I mean, that's what Shigeru Miyamoto did. That's why we're mm. making a documentary about him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the strange thing is, this is all the plot to a really crappy indie movie, <laughs> which is and really just a lot. Which is really just a complicated unlockable in Tony Hawk's Pro Gunner Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think I think we've reached our. I think we just nailed it, and I don't think there's anything else we can do at this point. Yeah, we, we, we've reached the, be the best ideas that we're ever going to get. Alright, so I'll get back in touch with you about making this a reality. Alright, sweet. Sounds good. So that's going to do... <laughs> oh, God, that's going to do it for this gritty reboot of Wins and Nonsense. I am Zachary. God, I'm Abby. I'm Marty. And I'm Dakota. And we will see you next time. Or not. I don't know. We may just kill each other in, in an all-out brawl. In Gritty so, Reboot. So is this, is this the real dark Gritty Reboot? Where Whims and Nonsense. The Gritty podcast, Reboot. Instead of recording a podcast, you just go get fed up with each other, meet in a central battleground, and just fight to the death. Fight me in the pit, bro! With guns. Pax me, bro. Fight me, IRL. <laughs> Pax me, bro. Say to my face, fucker, not online. See what happens. Ew. <laughs> 1v1 IRL. Oh, no, God. Don't... Box only. Oh, that's nation. Oh, this show's gonna get cancelled so fast, <laughs> y'all. <Yo. laughs>